The procedure begins with first mixing the sample by hand to give it a homogeneous character. Then, 40 grams of sample are weighed and placed in a 600 milliliter beaker. This weight is increased for sandy soils and decreased for clayey ones to utilize the measuring range on the hydrometer stem. If no special pretreatments are required, such as the removal of organic matter or carbonates, excess amounts of which might interfere with readings or give false particle size results, a dispersant is then added to the beaker. This consists of 100 milliliters of sodium hexametaphosphate solution along with 100 milliliters of distilled water. The sample is then allowed to sit overnight to ensure complete saturation by the dispersant. After overnight saturation, the soil solution is poured into a mixing or blending cup, making sure to rinse all soil particles into the cup. Once this is done, the cup is placed onto a malt mixer or blender and stirred vigorously for five minutes to disperse the sample. After stirring, the sample is poured into a 1,000 milliliter cylinder, again making sure to rinse all soil particles from the cup into the cylinder. The cylinder is then filled with distilled water up to the 1,000 milliliter line. Occasionally, some samples will generate a small amount of foam during the mixing process which can obscure reading the hydrometer. Should this happen, the foam can be eliminated by adding a small amount of ethanol or a drop or two of amyl alcohol to the cylinder. This will reduce the surface tension of the foam's bubbles, causing them to burst and the foam to subside. This should be done prior to filling the cylinder to the 1000 milliliter line. After the cylinder has been filled, it is fitted with an insulated sleeve. This is done to moderate or eliminate any temperature changes which may take place during the course of hydrometer readings. This is critical as temperature changes affect the rate at which particles fall or settle in the cylinder with the passage of time. Determinations made by hydrometer over widely varying temperatures will not be as accurate as those made where temperatures are more or less consistent. A blank is also prepared at this time. This will consist of adding 100 milliliters of the sodium hexametaphosphate solution to an empty cylinder, filling to the 1000 milliliter line, then covering with an insulating sleeve. A blank measurement is necessary because dispersant added to each sample will yield a particular hydrometer reading which will need to be accounted for in the calculations. Any hydrometer reading changes in the blank will be due solely to temperature changes. Make a few preliminary plunges to both the blank cylinder and the soil solution cylinder. Then take and record the temperatures of each. The recording is done at this time as readings taken over the first few minutes will occupy one's time and temperature changes between the first few readings should be negligible. Care needs to be exercised with the plunger to ensure full mixing, yet no loss of sample. Plunging should be done with long, even, fairly rapid strokes, reaching from the bottom of the cylinder to within an inch or two of the liquid surface. Avoid coming near to or breaching the surface as sample solution may be ejected from the cylinder. Just prior to initiating the series of hydrometer readings, the solutions in the cylinder should be thoroughly mixed for 30 seconds to ensure a homogeneous character. The instant the 30-second plunging has been completed, that is when the plunger is removed from the solution on its final upward stroke, a timer should be started and the time should be recorded on the data sheet. Readings of the blank cylinder must also be taken at the same time intervals and around the same times sample hydrometer readings are taken. Manage your time so that you can take both blank and soil solution readings together. About 10 seconds before taking the first hydrometer reading, gently lower the hydrometer into the cylinder. Let it slide into the solution and avoid having it bob up and down, which would make taking the reading difficult. You may want to practice this technique prior to running your samples. Read the hydrometer at the upper edge of the meniscus surrounding the hydrometer stem. Leave the hydrometer in the solution after taking the 30 second reading, but remove it after the 60 second reading. Reinsert the hydrometer 10 seconds before taking each subsequent reading and record this along with the temperature of the sample solution. Remember to do the same for the blank. When a sample is high in soluble salts, flocculation will often result. As can be seen, particles will settle unnaturally in solution, sometimes with distinct dense and clear layers. Should this occur, results obtained by the hydrometer method will not be accurate, and the sample should be reanalyzed by a method in which soluble salts are removed. After completion of hydrometer readings, the contents of the cylinder can be sieved if sand fraction data are required. Pouring the cylinder contents down the drain may accumulate sediment in the plumbing. To avoid this, pour the mixture into a bucket or similar container and allow the soil to settle. Decant the liquid portion and chase with copious tap water. The sediment in the bucket may then be disposed as ordinary solid waste if not part of a soil quarantine area.